Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. We're in the book of James, chapter 4. We ended at verse 12 last week, so we'll start at verse 13. Turn in your Bibles there as we continue studying the Word of God on Wednesday night. And I am so glad that you're joining with me for this study. I hope you're being enriched. I hope you're growing in the Lord. You're learning uh, some deep truths of, of the Scripture. And uh, it's important that we always stay in the Word. Let's pray together as we start. Father in heaven, as we gather here today, grant us wisdom for these times. I know these are trying times for some, lonely times for others. They test our patience, our perseverance. But Father, I pray that you would grant our hearts the wisdom to discern, to know how to always turn that which is uh, dark to that which is light and to turn on the lights of the gospel in every situation we encounter. So I pray for wisdom today to continue to navigate uh, through this ordeal that America is going through, that you'll bless America and that you'll keep healing hearts and make things better day by day. And I pray, Father, that uh, you will fill our hearts today with your word and let the joy of the Lord refresh us as we study your word. Give us an important word for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have ever been to a kindergarten graduation, uh, sometimes even a high school graduation, you have heard a book read that was written by Dr. Seuss. Title of that book is, Oh, the Places You Will Go. Remember that? Now this is high school graduation uh, season, and uh, some may even be hearing that if they're allowed to graduate and have a ceremony. But I want you to listen. I want to read parts of that, uh, that which we read to seniors, and listen for what it says. It says, congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know. And you are the guy who will decide where to go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because... You'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang, and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be the best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Now, it's a longer uh, book than that, and it's got some ups and downs in it. But you can get the general philosophy of what Dr. Seuss is saying. He's saying to those young people, the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want. Accept the challenges. There's a bright day ahead. Go out and climb that mountain. It's a very positive, very motivational, very informational book. And it's a good one to read for seniors. But it leaves one thing out. And what it leaves out is what James is going to address today in chapter 4, verse 13. It leaves out God's will. It leaves out what God has planned for your life and finding God's plan. James is talking to Christians who've been scattered around the, the countryside with uh, because of persecution. And... Uh, I guess he decides that uh, many of them are planning to come back to, to uh, Jerusalem and many are making plans for the, the, the new life that they're building. And he's telling them to be careful about how you plan your life. Let's read what he says. Verse 13. Come now. You who say today or tomorrow... We will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. 
Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? That's a good question for young people to be asked. What is your life? It's a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and we will do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it's a sin. He's talking about how people live their lives without God. And actually, he's talking here, I want to share with you four follies that he's addressing here. What are the four follies that James is addressing? Number one, he's talking about the, the folly of presumption. The folly of presumption, presuming that uh, I can I can get up and I can go over to this city and I can buy and sell and make a profit and I can come home and do this. I'm presuming that uh, I can do whatever I want and nothing's going to get in my way. Folks, I want to tell you something. We can't take tomorrow for granted. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. He's saying, don't assume you've got it forever. When I think about this, I realize that uh, sometimes we, we don't even think about, we go through days and don't think about God. It, there was a picture of a man on the, <clears throat> on the internet Monday. And they were saying, do you recognize this man? He'd gone hiking in another state on a trail and died. He did not have any ID. They were trying to find out who this guy is. Now, don't you know when he set out on that trail that day that he assumed that I'll just walk this trail for a few miles and come home and I'm all's going to be okay? Did not know that his life would end on that trail. We assume things about life that we need to reevaluate. I, I love that story about the. Uh, farmer that was praying about becoming a preacher. He prayed one day, said, Lord, if it's your will that I become a preacher, show me a sign. As he was plowing, getting ready to plant corn, he looked up and he saw in the clouds, the clouds had formed a, a P. And then they had formed a, a C. And he said, it's a sign from God, P and C preach Christ. He raced home, told his wife, God had clearly called him to preach. The preacher let him preach the next Sunday, since he's called to preach, and he did a terrible job. It was awful. And he asked his wife, what did I do wrong? I clearly saw God give me a sign, PC, preach Christ. His wife said, he might have meant plant corn. That's a good story. Don't assume you know. Listen, just because you went to church on Sunday, don't assume he's going to be with you on Monday if you take off and do things that are ungodly. Samson, remember what happened to him? The Bible says after he lost his hair, he got up and shook himself, and the Lord was not with him. I believe we can't assume the Lord's with us all the time. We must seek Him every single day. Don't assume. Seek Him every day. Seek Him in everything you do. Go into another city, buying and selling. Seek Him every day. Lord, does this have your hand on it? Lord, is this approved by you? Don't presume. Second of all, there's the folly of permanence. You say, Pastor, what permanence? Well, he assumed that everything would just go on like it had always gone on. Nothing changes. We like permanence in our lives. But you know, that may not be God's will, that things remain the same. Things have to change. I'm reminded of uh, blind Bartimaeus in the Bible. 
Jesus was coming through his town. And by the way, Jesus never came through that town again that we know of. It was his one time through that town. Blind Bartimaeus heard a crowd. What's going on? Jesus is coming. Bartimaeus began to cry out, Lord Jesus, have mercy. Have mercy. Well, the crowd was thronging Jesus, and uh, they told Bartimaeus he was creating a ruckus. You know what a ruckus is? He's creating a ruckus. And they said, be quiet, be quiet. He shouted all the more, have mercy. And Jesus stopped and healed that blind man. You see, he had one chance. Today was his day. He didn't have tomorrow. Jesus never came through again. If he had listened to everybody and been quiet, Jesus would not have stopped. But see, he used that time to call upon the Lord and it changed his life. Today might be an important day. Don't miss this day and its importance for calling on the Lord. You may not have tomorrow. Tomorrow might be different. There was a Texas pastor years ago called Joe Henry Hawkins. And I love the story that Joe told. Listen to this story. There was a, a wealthy businessman and his wife in town. They were not Christians. And he had gone by to visit them one night because the wife had made a profession of faith. She was going to be baptized the next day, Sunday, at church. He went by to visit the wife and talk to the husband. Isn't it time you accepted Christ? The husband said, yes, it is. He said, Pastor, tomorrow I'm going to walk down that aisle. I'm going to accept Christ as Savior. I want you to baptize me after the service with my wife. John, Joe Henry said, wonderful. Had a prayer. He said, I was walking out the front door of the house. He said, I grabbed the handle of the door to leave. And the Holy Spirit said, go back and pray with that man. He said, I turned around and went back and said, sir, I, are you sure you don't need to accept the Lord tonight, right now? No, no, I'm, I'm as good as my word. I will be there tomorrow. Joe Henry said he went to the door again and when he grabbed the handle, the Holy Spirit said again, don't leave this house without him accepting Christ. He turned back third time. He said, can I read you a scripture? The man said, yes. And the scripture he read was, behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. He looked at that business man and said, who wrote that? And the man said, God did. Now is the day of salvation. He said, who does not want you? to accept him and receive salvation now. And the man said, Satan doesn't. Joe Henry said, who are you going to follow? The man said, I followed Satan all my life. I'm going to follow God. And he got down on his knees and he prayed and asked Jesus to come into his heart and save him. And he did. He was saved. He got up and said, tomorrow I'm going to be baptized with my wife. Joe Henry said he went home and celebrating. The next morning at church, he always greets people as they come in. He said that that man's nephew comes running up and said that that man, that businessman had, had a heart attack in the night. He was not doing well. Joe Henry said, tell him I'll go, I'll be there to pray with him after the service. Joe preached the sermon, getting ready to go see that man when the, the nephew came back and said, he died. Now imagine this. What if he had waited? He thought, well, I'm going to have tomorrow. No, you're not. Some of you have been putting off accepting Christ as Savior. You've been putting off making things right with a loved one over there. You've been putting off saying some words that you need to say to a loved one. Do it today. Here's the third folly, and that's the folly of procrastination. Putting it off, that's procrastination as well. I believe that we need to realize that delayed obedience is disobedience. 
Put that on your refrigerator. Delayed obedience is disobedience. In Acts 24, verse 25, Paul has shared his testimony with Felix. And Felix is under conviction. And what does he do? He says, Paul, I'm going to call you back to talk to you at a more convenient time. And he never did. Procrastination. Somebody said it's the great thief of time. But more than that, procrastination is the great thief of souls. We cannot put off what God is asking us to do. I believe that there are things he's calling his church to do we can't put off. We've got to move now to win this community to Christ. Here's the fourth thing. The fourth folly is godless planning. Notice here that uh, they, they plan without asking God. He said, there's nowhere in here where they said, I'm going to ask God, it's okay. Godless planning. And that's why I said Dr. Seuss left one thing out. He left out God. Are you planning your life with God? Listen, the Bible says that the steps of a good man and woman are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That is Psalm 37, 23. Listen to Psalm 32, 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. The way we go is the way God teaches us, the way he directs. Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. You see, James is saying here, folks, be led by the Spirit. Remember Philip? He was led by the Spirit to that eunuch and led him to Christ. Because he was led by the Spirit. And, and, and that's the high calling of a believer. I'm going to be led by the Spirit of God. As I look at this scripture, I then had to ask, how then should we live? How is James telling us to live? Let me give you five or six things he's saying here. How do you live? First of all, we live realizing that every moment is precious. Every moment is precious. Listen to this. Someone wrote it and I don't have the author. If I knew it would be the last time that, I see, that I'd see you fall asleep, I would tuck you in more tightly and pray the Lord your soul to keep. If I knew it would be the last time that I'd see you walk out that door, I would give you a hug and kiss and call you back for just one more. If I knew it would be the last time I'd hear your voice lifted up in praise, I would tape each word in action and play them back throughout my days. If I knew it would be the last time I would spare an extra minute or two to stop and say I love you instead of assuming you know I do. So just in case tomorrow never comes and today is all we get, I'd like to say how much I love you and I hope we never will forget. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone, young or old alike, and today may be the last chance you get to hold a loved one tight. So if you're waiting for tomorrow, why not do it today? For if tomorrow never comes, you'll surely regret the day. That you didn't take that extra time for a smile, a hug, or a kiss. And you were too busy to grant someone what turned out to be their last one last wish. So hold your loved ones close today and whisper in their ear that you love them very much and that you'll always hold them dear. Take time to say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you, or it's okay. 
And if tomorrow never comes, you'll have no regrets about today. Title of that is, If Tomorrow Never Comes. Remember, you're not promised tomorrow. Here's another thing James is saying. Reckon yourself dead to sin and alive to God. Write that scripture down, Romans 6, verse 11. Reckon yourself dead to sin and alive to God. Listen, I am living this day for him and not for me. You see, Dr. Seuss is saying, go out and live for you. James is saying, go out and live for him. We get up in the morning and we say, this is my day. No, get up in the morning and say, this is his day. This day belongs to Christ. How can I honor him this day reckon myself dead to sin paul the apostle said i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ who lives in me resolve here's the third thing resolve throughout that day to keep your focus on eternity keep your focus on eternity keep it your focus on how you can honor him and, and look for the Holy Spirit to direct your life and to give you guidance. Remember that it's important for us to honor God with every decision, resolve to honor him. And if you'll do those things, I want to tell you what kicks in. Psalm 91 kicks in. If you'll remember and resolve and, and, and if you will realize every day that you're living for him, Psalm 91 will be your. Listen to what this psalm says. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high, that's what you'll be doing. Every day I put myself under his care. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. Surely, look what happens. He will keep you, he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your right hand, ten thousand at your side, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love on me, therefore I will deliver him. That's the Lord speaking. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, and I will be with him in trouble and deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a good word that is. We, uh, 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 lady in my last church, uh, uh, Mary uh, uh, Gray, had those printed on bandanas, and we gave them, and she gave them to soldiers deploying to Iraq and Afghanistan, and they would wear that around their necks. And many letters came back to Mary saying how blessed they were that God had protected and shielded them. Wear that over your heart. 
Every day, get up and put on Psalm 91. I'm dwelling under the shelter of the Most High. And put your family under that shelter as well. James knew that they were out there in a wicked world. He knew that they were out there where all kinds of things could happen. And if they went out of their house without God, it would be a dangerous thing. So he's telling them, be careful to remember how precious every day is and make it his. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, let us take to heart the importance of doing the imperative thing now. Not procrastinating, not presuming, not assuming, not making godless plans, but always being resolved to be led by the Spirit of God in everything that comes our way. And through the ordeal we are going with through right now with coronavirus and lockdown and quarantine, Lord, let your Spirit guide us to the wellspring of truth in your Word. And let us drink deeply from the river of the water of life and be refreshed always as we walk through these days hand in hand with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget that this Sunday we're having an outdoor worship service. Another one. Hope that you'll be here, that you'll come early and find a good spot. And I look forward to waving at you Sunday morning. God bless you.